Hi friends, Angelica here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be um, making this card using products from the greetery and um, a variety of Daniel Smith watercolors. Now I made this card probably three or four months ago. I've been away for quite a while. I had to take some time off to take care of the family. So I'm going to try and remember what exactly it was that I was doing. I know that this was the first time I had used a watercolor brush in a long time. So I was just kind of getting used to having it back in my hand. So this is the stamp set that I used. It's called Hand in Hand. And unfortunately, it is now retired. I didn't realize that when I was making this card. I'm pulling colors from my Daniel Smith um, watercolor palette. And then I'm going to be using Arches watercolor paper. And um, I've got my ceramic palette. I'll be stamping with Pink Fresh Studio Detail Black Ink. I'm going to start this card by stamping the umbrellas first and I'm just going to do it freehanded. I have a, an acrylic block that I'm using and I also have some um, mats to put over the stamps or put over the stamped image. So whenever I'm stamping first and masking that umbrella is going to be in the front and then I will stamp around it and those umbrellas will be behind it. So it's going to um, give a really pretty effect. I did practice a few times on scratch paper practicing exactly how I wanted to position the umbrellas before I started stamping on the arches watercolor paper because this paper is pretty expensive. So yeah, I started with printer paper, did a couple uh, different arrangements and this was the arrangement that I liked the most. So I'm just kind of replicating it. And um, once I finish the stamping, taking off the mask, you're going to completely see how the umbrellas look sitting up front. It kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but I'm telling you, once the masks come off, it makes sense. And it's really cool to be able to make your own background using simple stamps. I mean, this is a really simple background. And now I'm going to be able to make a rainbow of colors and um, kind of get used to having my watercolor brush back into my hand. I'm starting with a clean watercolor brush in clean water, and I'm just wetting the paper. I'm making sure I'm getting the umbrellas wet, and I'm making sure to get the back behind the umbrellas wet too, because I want to have a really soft rainbow background um, behind the umbrellas that's going to match the colors of um, each umbrella. So I'm just mapping out where I want the paint to be on the paper, because once I put the paint down, it's gonna follow the water. Now for the rainbow, I am starting with um, pink, which I used opera pink, and then I believe quinacridone purple. I are, yeah, it's quinacridone purple. I'm kind of guessing on the colors that I used since I painted this a while ago, um, but I'm gonna try and keep it as close to the colors that I think I used as possible. Regardless, this is just the, um, rainbow that I picked, the rainbow of colors that I picked, you know, use whatever color is on your palette. And what I was mainly trying to do is just get used to my colors again, because I used to watercolor all the time. And then I literally took, I don't know, maybe a five month break. And I almost felt like I had to relearn everything. I had to relearn how much water my brush holds, um, how much pigment to use when mixing colors so it's not too dark and not too light. Um, so this was just, this was a great practicing session. If I was to do this background again, I would definitely put down a little bit more color because I completely forgot that watercolor does fade once it's dry and it does dry back. And I wanted the background to be a little bit more vibrant than, um, how it turned out, but I also wanted to do just one layer. I didn't want any colors kind of overlapping and there being edge and edge. So, you know, uh, again, a learning experience. So now I know if I want a background to be a little bit more vibrant, I need to use just a, a bit more pigment. So getting back to the colors, like I said before, I started with upper pink and then quinacridone purple, um, cerulean blue, phthalo turquoise, Cascade Green, which is one of my favorite greens on my palette. I believe the next one was either Sap Green or Serpentine Genuine. And then Lemon lemon Yellow was the yellow. All right, so now I have the first layer done. I'm going to start um, 
darkening up the um, umbrellas, putting details in them. Um, also, I'm just playing with color. I'm just trying to work on my shading and, you know, light source, um, what colors work good together. I did change the opera pink to quinacridone rose just to make it a bit darker and richer. And the colors that I'm using, this, this palette was definitely inspired by Daniel Smith's um, Jean Hayes. Jean Haynes um, master paint set and um, I, I just this soft pastel um, color palette I just absolutely love it it's so beautiful now I didn't use all of the colors in her palette I don't own all of the colors but I found ones that were comparable if you're not familiar with Jean Haynes I definitely recommend checking her out her paintings are so gorgeous so feminine and whimsical and I love her style and um, really admire how she paints I've seen a lot of her YouTube videos and you know I've read her books I scour the internet to look at pictures of her paintings um, I, I'm a huge fan I'm skipping umbrellas. I'm doing every other umbrella right now so the paint doesn't bleed into the um, the umbrella right next to it. It's nice to, it's good to let your paint or your paper dry because the paint will definitely um, go over, follow any moisture that's on the paper. So every other umbrella I'm doing and giving the paper time to dry. I did change my my brush when I started doing the layers. So when I started the painting, I was using a number 12 round brush. It was a silver black velvet brush. And the black velvet brush holds a lot of water. I, the number 12 is a great size to do that wet water um, background because I was able to get the paper really saturated with water. Um, but not put too much water on the paper. You know, like I wanted the, I wanted the paper to be have a, like a really nice glisser to it, really you know really shiny, but not have pools of water sitting on top of the paper. Um, and I also use that you know to put the first layer of color down. And then I've switched over to a smaller brush. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite number eight round brush, and. And it just has, a, it's, you know, a little smaller, so I'm able to control the the um, color going down just a little bit more. And right now I'm just, you know, focusing on um, my light source and where I want the darker part, the shading to be. I'm really glad that I pulled my palette down, my ceramic palette down, so you can see how little paint I pick up um, with my brush. And also when I'm picking up, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm picking up paint from my main palette, I do stop and drop it in the ceramic palette. I never paint from, you know, the straight paint pan to the paper. I always stop to put it on the ceramic um, palette just to see how heavy it is on my brush. I usually add a little bit of water to um, lighten it up a little bit before bringing it to the paper. So I'm just going to continue working on the rainbow. Um, I'm putting brush, or I'm putting a little bit of paint on the tip of my paintbrush, adding the color to the paper. And I do have my rag right next to my palette so I can um, get some of that paint off of my brush and then just kind of blend that color out so there isn't a harsh line. I'm going to turn some music on now and just let you watch the my process of adding these next few layers. I'll be back shortly, probably at the last layer, because I do add one more color to um, deepen the colors up.
Well, I'm getting closer to being finished. And like I said before, I brought in another color to help darken um, where I wanted like the drop shadows to be under the umbrellas and just to deepen up the colors in general. And that color I used was Shadow Violet. This is a color that I use quite a lot. Um, the pigments just seem to uh, mix well with um, all of the colors that I've used with it. So I'm just putting a little dab of uh, the Shadow Violet in each color well and just using the tiniest little bit to mix into like what I just did with the Thalo Turquoise. Just use a tiny little bit and you can see it's just really going to deepen up those lines for me. Okay, so now I'm just finishing up the panel by adding some paint splatters. I'm making sure that I'm putting a good amount of water into each uh, color well so the paint's pretty thin and um, easy to splatter. And I'm just kind of doing it in a rainbow color too, starting with the pinks and um, progressing over to the yellow side. I will finish up the panel with... Um, a couple sentiments that I pulled from the Greeteries Simple Things stamp set and added it to a card base. And that finishes the card. I want to thank you for hanging out with me and watching my painting process. I hope I was able to send some inspiration your way. If you liked what you saw, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll be back shortly with some more projects. So I'll see you then. Bye.